Word of the Lord. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Well, let's get into the prophetic and activation. Uh, thanks to the wisdom of my wife, I will start with the top section. And that is that we are, as the body, to desire the greatest gifts. So the greatest gifts is not for the individual. So a lot of people want gifting for all different kinds of reasons. But gifting is for the body. Your gift is not for you. It's given to you by God for the body. And if you start on that foundation, you'll keep yourself safe. But if you start on the foundation of I want a gift because I want to be used of God and I want to be seen of man, it's built on the wrong foundation. This is where selfish ambition and self-seeking come from. So it's always good, and I mentioned this last week, that prophetic people put too much pressure on themselves to come up with prophetic words. It's not healthy. I don't put pressure on myself. Even tonight, there is not one bit of pressure on me. Because the Spirit of God told me I was a prophet. I don't have to try and strive for something that I already am. Sonship is about your position, it's not about your performance. See, I don't have to prove to you I'm a prophet. Don't have to prove it. The fruit's there. And if you don't believe it, that's fine. Because Jesus didn't care that the devil tried to test him about being the Son of God. He knew who he was. Now, I didn't just come up magically with that and walk away around and be a self-proclaimed prophet. Actually, I've never publicly said this even on as blatantly as I am right now. Because I don't go around saying, oh, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophet. No, the Holy Spirit in an encounter told me I was a prophet. Because I couldn't make sense of who I was as an individual. Prophetic people don't really know who they are if they cannot identify or fit in with the church. You'll find a lot of prophetic people don't really blend that well with the church, and that's a problem. It's a problem both sides. Why? Because the prophetic people need to learn how to grow and be more relatable, and they also, on the other side, the leaders of the church need to be open to things that aren't in their gift set. That's outside of their box, their paradigm. So if I went into most places, the only reason they would be open for me to teach in dreams and visions interpretation is because I can prophetically move in the spirit. Because they see the gift, they're only open then for dreams interpretation. You look at most churches, they're not open for dreams, visions and interpretation. Why? Because it's not their language. It's outside of their paradigm. Yet if you don't understand idioms, symbols, types, shadows, similes, dark sayings and riddles, you will not understand how God operates. You actually read the Bible and it's a puzzle. The lion from the west is coming and the cheetah from the north and an eagle with great wings comes flying over and a flood caused Israel to flee into the wilderness and then Alan says the flood was an army. How do you get a flood from an army? You think army abstract, don't you? You think army as in we know what an army looks like. An army is what we see in Australia, what we see in the UK, wherever the army is, that's what we perceive as an army. But he just said that the flood that was spewed out of the serpent's mouth was actually an army. Would you have ever come up with that? David said, I was like a sparrow on the roof, feeling lonely. He likened himself to a sparrow. Have you ever seen a sparrow on a roof by itself? 
on its lonesome? See, that's not our everyday language, is it? So prophetic people need education. And how they get education is in the body. Because it's not good enough for prophetic people to be outside the body. Because the equipping station is the body for the work of the ministry. Because when people have constant dreams about snakes, we need to understand what snakes mean in a dream. So we would say to you, what does a snake mean? Well, a snake is something that we could identify as the serpent in the garden. We know the serpent, right, was cunning, was crafty, was shrewd. Actually, more shrewd than any of the beasts of the field. We also see Jesus talk about be soft as doves and as shrewd as serpents. So we know that he's speaking about us in the language of how we are meant to be when it comes to the gospel. See, when we hear shrewd as a serpent, we think that's all about striking. It's not. It's about timing. It's all about timing. Wait until the spirit falls. Wait until. It's all about timing. So be innocent as doves. That's what it means. Be innocent. Be without guile. But be as shrewd. Be as wise as serpents. Wait for the timing when you are witnessing to people. Don't just preach down their throat. Imagine if people witness according to the power of the Holy Spirit and the moving of the Spirit. How much more effective would we be to see the power fall and touch people? Because it's the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. According to Romans chapter 1 verse 16. That's what Paul said. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not embarrassed. It says be ready in and out of season to preach the word of God. Do the work of an evangelist. So we've got to be ready in season, which in the Greek it means when everything is going really well for you. When all the promises are getting fulfilled, when all the blessings are falling, when the season's on the mountain peak. When God's the best thing since sliced bread, go and preach. But also when you're in the valley low, when it's dark, it's dim, it's dull, it's colourless. When things aren't going your way, preach the gospel. Be ready in and out of season. That's why they call it prophetic evangelism, because they get words of knowledge about body parts and certain issues in people's lives so they can witness the gospel to those people. So my whole quest is to go through the Bible three times this year and I am going to understand the language of God. I'm going to smash the Bible because I want to be a symbol. I want to be a sign. I want to be a language that's different from what I'm seeing. I don't like mundane. I don't like watered down gospel. I want the kingdom gospel. I want to be an oracle. I want to be someone that hears the voice of God that knows the actual God that I'm listening to. We've got one chance on this planet to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And if, God forbid, I ain't waiting around for anyone else. If you don't want to be, that's fine. But I'm going to be. And if you want to be, let's go together and let's be ferocious for the kingdom of God. Because this is not a mamby-pamby, wishy-washy, yin-yang gospel. This is the only gospel that we've got until the end of the age. And I'm pretty pumped about that. And I tell you, the more you get into the Word, the more you want it. The more you get into the Spirit, the more you want it. And the more you think you know, the less you know. So God always keeps you humble. So just about when you think you've known it after 50-something years of ministry, God goes, to the killing tree, na-na-na, to the killing tree. Why the killing tree? Because you are going to start again afresh with humble pie. God's very good at giving you humble pie. So I say all that because the language has to be understood before the prophetic gift can actually be manifested and 
you can flow in it effectively. Why is that? For example, if I come up to Scott and say, Scott, I see this, I sense that, but I don't have an interpretation for what I'm seeing and sensing, he's left there confused because he'll say, oh, Scott, I see there's a snake around your life. Uh, what snake? What did it look like? What's it doing? Oh, I, I see this massive serpent tied around your neck. Okay, and, and, and what about if the person's already full of fear? What if they're already freaking out? What if they're already feeling demonised? Is that a prophetic word? That is not a prophetic word. That may be a discerning of spirits. And main, what I would suggest to you, if you see a snake around someone's spirit, your job is to intercede. It's not sitting there to tell someone they've got a snake around their, their neck. I have dreams about people quite often. I have dreams about situations that I can see. I know what's going to happen. Not all the time, but there's things that I know. And I don't talk to people about it. Why? Because I'm called to intercede. Prophetic people don't fully understand sometimes that their gift is not for them to go and prophesy over people and to know things about people. It is to intercede. The intercession gift comes very closely, ties very closely with the prophetic gifting. True prophetic people have intercession on their life. Why? Because they're not interested in just the gift. They want to know the person that gave them the gift. They want the heart of God. They don't want the heart of man. Now, I know I'm going on a bit of a sidetrack, but we got there. So desire the greatest gifts. See, everything to do with your private life, if you want to grow prophetically, deal with your own crap first. Oh, I want to grow prophetically. Deal with your crap first. You will not grow prophetically until you deal with your own crap. Don't worry about anyone else. I start with Mark Johnson first. I don't start with anyone here. Because as long as I'm accountable to him and humbling my heart, because I tell you what, I keep hum getting humbled like you wouldn't believe, like constantly humbled. And it's so easy to blame other people. And God goes, it's time to deal with that. What are you doing why are you doing this? Why do I have to give up so much? Because you ask for much. Sometimes we, we don't take God seriously. When you say, God, I'm willing to give it all, he goes, really? <laughs> and so he just touches on a spot. You really, you, oh, yeah, oh, and we get all, oh, well, that area, give us a bit of more time. And so he's, he's okay with taking some area if you want to give it to him. And that's why people go around the mountain, because they don't really want to give it to them. They've got what they call a pretend agreement. They say yes with their head, but their heart's not ready for it. I said to God once, I said, man, I want an abundance of revelation. I want to see what Paul's saying. He goes, you're not ready. You wouldn't be able to handle it. That was humbling, wasn't it? Isn't that humbling? I want to, I want to have these abundance of revelation. He goes, you wouldn't be able to handle it. Where you're at in your character, you will not be able to handle the weight of revelation. If God's not giving you revelation at the level that you want it, it's because you're not ready. Because the amount of attack that's going to come against you because of the abundance of revelation, it actually says a messenger from Satan came and buffeted Paul because of the abundance of revelation. Prophetic people have the revelation gift on them. Now, I don't say gift as in it's a gift, but it's the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Well, how does the spirit of revelation work for a prophetic person? I'll tell you how it works. You could be in a room and someone's talking and you have a bam moment. You have a whoa. It's like your heart is open. It's like the word comes alive. It's like the things of the spirit come alive. So here's me. I'm at Bible college. And I'm sitting there minding my own business. And as the man up the front was preaching the gospel, he was talking about God living in him, talking about the power of the spirit. And as I could sense the tangible presence of God in the room, like a camera flash just went like this and flashed. And God peeled back my natural eyes and I seen in the spirit realm in an instant that Christ was in me. And that if I believed on him as the scriptures have said, then rivers of water will flow out of my belly. I got a revelation that Christ was in me. That came by revelation. And by the way, if you want to know God, it's not just by reading your Bible. 
It's actually by revelation. So instead of praying to God for all these things, how about you ask him for revelation? If you want to see God and know God, ask him for revelation and wisdom. That's the main prayer. Yeah, that's how he builds his church. Aren't yeah, by revelation of Christ. Yeah. Absolutely. So pursue love. Um, if you are desiring the prophetic gift, I would say to you that God's going to build it on the foundation of love. Unless you love people, don't be prophetic. Because if you're arrogant, you're rude, and you treat people like scum, because you've got a prophetic gift and God's going to judge you and he's coming down heavy, don't ever listen to people like that. That is not the true spirit of prophecy. God is not harsh. If he pro- pro- speaks prophetically over someone, he's not going to destroy them. He's not going to tear them down. The Bible says the spirit of prophecy is to bring comfort, edification, and exaltation. The other thing about the prophetic is it needs to bring some kind of comfort to your spirit. Prophetic gifting should not leave you guessing. It shouldn't leave you going, what is that about? I don't understand what you're talking about. It should leave you with a sense, even though I don't understand it, I feel comfort from what you said and you can go to the Lord about that and God can actually fulfill those things in your life. Am I making sense of what I'm saying? So what we've got to do is we've got to understand the prophetic gifting usually operates with the word of knowledge. You cannot get bogged down with the word of knowledge. Why? Because if you have too much word of knowledge, the landing of the prophetic doesn't sit properly. Too much information of knowledge, the prophetic word doesn't sit with the person's heart because they're caught up with all the details. So, for example, if I said something about yourself, Marvin, I said uh, specifically something about you, and I see that, then I say, okay, Lord, watch your heart. So then I speak encouragement into that specific area. For example, there was a person that came here the other night, and as I was praying for them, I said, uh, God's going to break off you the spirit of poverty. And I also said a couple other things. And I prayed for this person and they also got healed in their heal. And the person said to another person later, did you tell him about me? So I didn't just acknowledge the word of knowledge, it's the encouragement. Remember, prophetic is always about. So make sure you major in encouragement. That's the key. Word of knowledge is always access for the prophetic word to land better. So pursue love. Now, just quickly, and then we'll get into some activation. There's just so many angles I could take, guys. Like, it's just ridiculous. They say that someone to become a mature prophet takes at least 20 years. I believe God's fast-tracking the prophetic. I believe that he's raising up prophetic voices, especially out of Australia. Amen. Prophetic voices in Australia as well. Amen. And so <clears throat> I've been studying the book of Ezekiel and Daniel lately. They say that the book of Jeremiah, he's the weeping prophet. They say that he speaks about the father. Then you look at the book of Daniel, he speaks about the son. Then you look at the book of Ezekiel, he speaks about the spirit. It's mentioned in the spirit more in the book of Ezekiel than any other book of the prophets. He was taken in the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit. So you see the father in Jeremiah, you see the son in Daniel, and you see the spirit in the book of Ezekiel. Who thinks that's cool? Now, the word Ezekiel, his actual name means to harden or to strengthen. Why is that? Because he came up against a rebellious nation. One thing that we've got to be careful about the prophetic is stay out of criticism. You are not God's watchdog. One of the downfalls and the defaults of a prophetic person is criticism. Always have the heart of God and get soft in your heart towards people. 
Because I see a lot of offended prophetic people that take things to heart and people don't acknowledge their prophetic gifting, but they also become critical of the church and they become critical of other believers because they, some prophetic people think it's their role to call out sin. It's actually the Spirit's conviction that convicts people of their sin. Old Testament prophets were Yeah, 100%. So Ezekiel needed strength. We are living in a wicked and perverse generation, folks. And we have to know the Lord more than what we've ever known him. I sense such an urgency in the day we're living. I told you recently I had a dream about Noah's Ark coming from the heavens. I'm telling you, as in the days of Noah, so it's going to be in these last days. I'm telling you, it's coming. We're right on the cusp of it. It's time for preparation. It's time to know the word, and it's time to know the word of the Lord, and it's time to know the Lord. This is not a time to play games. If you haven't sorted out stuff in your life, you need to sort it out. Because the sin and the iniquity that's beginning to manifest, not just in this nation, but the nations of the world, it will chew you up and spit you out. We've got to be vessels of honour, vessels of purity, vessels of character, vessels that are willing to lay down their life and surrender to him more than we surrender to our own desires. And I think it's vitally important. Now, another thing that I've noticed in the book of Ezekiel, whenever God's face is against someone, they're in big trouble. <laughs> so you'll see through the book of Ezekiel, God's face was against them. <laughs> Isn't it good that God's face is for us? Remember the ironic blessing? May the Lord's face shine. Why do you think it says that? Because if the face ain't shining on you, man, you're in big trouble. So whenever God's face is against you, you're in big trouble. Go and read the book of Ezekiel, you'll find out. Uh, it didn't end too well for those that God's face was against. And number two, when the hand of the Lord is against or on someone in the negative, it ends up really bad. And this is why we need people in these last days that we have the hand of the Lord upon us. Have you ever, ever heard someone say he's got the hand of the Lord on him? What's the hand of the Lord? Yeah, it's, it's his favour, it's his blessing, but it's his hand of power. You will notice anyone with the hand of the Lord on them, they are people that carry clout, they carry power, they carry anointing. It's not just that guy, he, he, he's a believer, in, no, that guy carries something. He's got the hand of the Lord upon him. That's what we want, don't we, folks? We want the hand of the Lord. So thank you, Jesus, for the hand of the Lord coming upon us. Yes, and so notice too, the word of the Lord was rare in these days as well. Come on, the cherubic throne rocks up <laughs> while he's at the river. Ch ch where he's <laughs> yeah, but he's at, he's at the river. Chiba River. Yeah, so this little river offshoot. This is where Ezekiel, by the way, Ezekiel was a priest. And the reason, okay, God actually called him as a prophet. and He was a priest, so he was actually at the age of 30 where he was ready to do the priestly duties. But the city, Jerusalem, Judah, Israel was getting destroyed. And God came to him at a time where he couldn't even fulfill his priestly duties. This is a time of chaos. And God comes to him, come on man, with that cherubic throne, he rocks up. With these, with these beasts, with these creatures, with the head that appeared like a man, that a lion and an ox and an eagle. There was four of them. They had four wings and they had hands of a man. They had legs. Remember I said about straight legs. And it says they had an appearance of, of burnished bronze and fire and they had lightning all around them and they're zipping around and just boo -boo, and they've got these wheels within wheels with eyeballs. I mean, wow. This guy's just at the river one day. Imagine going down the river and you're just fishing. Imagine that. No, you're down on the boat and going for a fish and life's going really bad out there and next thing you know, boom, a cherubic throne rocks up and got like the man in appearance was sitting on a throne above the cherubs. I don't know about yourself, man, but that is like, woo, that's out of the box. That's like out of the box. And so what's important about this is that we need an open heavens. Notice sometimes the heavens don't seem open. 
So for visions to come, we need an open heaven. Amen. We need this space where the heavens are open. Mm. We pray mm. until he rends the heavens. We pray until the heavens crack open. We drill until we hit the oil. We do whatever it takes for an open heavens over us. And this is the wrestle. The wrestle is to see the heavens open. Because we want visions from the Lord, correct? We need the visions. And we also need the word of the Lord. We need to know what God's saying in these moments in our life. And also says, and the hand of the Lord comes upon you. Isn't it special? That you can actually go beyond the limitations of what a normal Christian looks like. Your concept of you can be completely rearranged when the heavens are open over you. This realm, like, you know, we talk about these cherubic throne and these four-faced creatures and this man in appearance sitting on the throne. Do you know this is real? Because it sounds like it's out of a storybook, right? It sounds like some, some movie. This is actually a real throne. That's real as we speak. These are real creatures. I don't know about yourself, but I'm just so dying to see some flipping out there stuff. I don't know, it's because of all the acid I took. I seriously don't know, mate. I'd smoked a few pots in my day and I'm like, I'm a bit out there. But do you know what's interesting? The creative part of my life was shut down as a kid. It was shut down and God reawoke it. He woke it up by the Spirit. Do you know, I was very headstrong until the spirit of wisdom and revelation started working on me. Do you know when I fried myself on the ice, I fried myself so hard because I'm absolutely like, I'm just all or nothing. I'm just like, fry myself till my tongue's hanging out, my eyeballs are rolling, gaunt, I'm looking like an absolute mess. Like I fried myself because I said, if I ever come back to you, I want to know that there's nothing else but you. There's none of this, oh, I might still dabble in this and do a bit of that. No, I said, I want to fry myself so if I ever come back to you, Jesus, I'm going to give you absolutely everything. So I thought there's only one way to do it, just absolutely smash myself. <laughs> so I'm at that messed up, I have to rely on him completely. <laughs> And I'll be honest with you, the ice done a great job. I'm serious. And I don't encourage you to do that, but it done a great job. No, it done a, it done a fantastic job, because it took me out of the analytical. My brain's that fried, it just started getting creative, and I'm like, oh. I, I couldn't think strong like I used to think. I just, I, I process now, I meditate. My wife will tell you, man, I walk around the house, and she's like... She thinks I'm up in the clouds. It's like I love it. It's awesome. Because I, the meditation shift, see? Meditation has got to shift. Your meditation has to shift first. If you want to enter the spirit realm, your meditation has to shift completely. If all you're thinking about is what you do and who you know and what you have or what you don't have, your meditation's wrong. There is a meditation that is pleasing in the eyes of the Lord. You can be busy but still meditating on the right things. Isn't that cool? So, this is what Ezekiel was. He was a priest. He was a prophet. He was also a watchman. Who knows what a watchman is? Yeah? They stand on the wall. Yeah. They see the enemy coming, the yeah. danger, mm -hmm. and they call out. Yeah. And they let people know of the danger yep. that's, that's coming. Very good. Yep. And if the watchman doesn't do his job? The enemy has power. The enemy does have power, but the blood is on their hands. Yeah, that's right. Ezekiel was going through a gate for the king of glory. <laughs> yep. So the watchmen see. They watch. 
They protect. They guard. They tell people ahead of time what's going on. Right? And if they don't warn the people, it says the blood's on their hands. See, in the name of offending people, prophetic people need to stand up and actually say things that may not be nice, prim and proper. Okay, it might be lollipops and candy floss. This is not a cruise ship, this is an actual battleship. And we need to prepare. Remember Agabus the prophet? He warned Paul, didn't he? Do you remember he warned him? Yeah. What did he warn him of? Imprisonment. Imprisonment, yep. He reenacted, didn't he? He grabbed the belt, said the belt of this man, tied himself up, he's going to be tied up. Yep. And what else? He warned about a drought. So we see that that's the New Testament prophet, Agabus the prophet. Isn't it? Oh, Lord Jesus. And last, he was a shepherd. And by the way, do you know Ezekiel had to lay on his side for 390 days? Say that again. He had to lay on his side for 390 days. And I think 40 on the other side just to give Israel the message. It's called guerrilla theatre. It's reenacting a certain thing to get the message across. Because Israel was a harlot, it was a whore. It was whoring itself after other gods. They were steeped in idolatry. They were sleeping with other nations. And God had a massive problem with it. He divorced Israel over it. Because they were an unfaithful wife. God forbid that we're an unfaithful wife. <laughs> Isn't it crazy how God spoke to Ezekiel and also told him, get some human dung <laughs> and cook your meal over it. And, and, and Ezekiel goes, oh Lord. <laughs> and he goes, all right, we'll get some cow dung. <laughs> hey, God's a good negotiator. <laughs> cool. So, a few more thoughts and then we'll get into it, all right? I want to say something that I think it's vitally important. You know when Jesus said, if you don't lose your life, you will not gain your life? Do you remember he said that verse? So I used to think, well, lose my life, that means I just lose my entire life. I just give it all up, right? And I realised something, that when you investigate the Greek there, the word life is actually speaking of your soul. See, life is in your spirit. But he's talking about the soul life being the self life. Unless you lose that life, you're not going to enter true life. So I believe the biggest hindrance to a prophetic anointing, now I'm not talking about a prophetic gift, I'm talking about a prophetic anointing, is when you live in the soul realm. You live in the analytical. You live in the logic, the reason, the rationale. You live in self-will. So you don't mind prophesying, but as soon as God tells you something, you don't want to listen, that's the soul. God wants your soul dealt with. He wants to have that part of you to yield to him and to surrender to him. The other thing is, if you really want to walk in the prophetic on a consistent basis, um, let your vices go. If you've got sex addiction, you need to deal with it. I did not grow in my prophetic gift until my sexual issues were dealt with. You will hit and miss the gift, but you won't grow into the gift. Purity is a big part of the prophetic. I'm not Mr. Popular. I don't tell everyone what they want to hear. I tell them what they need to hear. Because I'm not interested in what you think about your so-called journey with Jesus. I'm more interested in not grieving him. And until you realise that it's grieving him, then we will listen to the harder messages because it's not about us feeling sorry for ourselves and saying, God, I can't change. You say, Lord, I'll do whatever it takes to change. I've got to stop. Purity is massive when it comes to the prophetic. 
So we've got to address that issue. Cool? And I did touch on it the other week, and it's discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits is not just demons. If you think discerning of spirits is walk around saying this person's got a demon, there's a demon here and demon there, demon everywhere, demon, that is not true prophetic. It's actually pathetic to, to think like that. It's not good. It's not healthy. Because Christ is the king's spirit. Christ is the leading spirit. There's no one even that comes close to Jesus Christ. So when we look at him as the greatest spirit, the master of all spirits, the king of spirits, the father of spirits, we know who's in charge. So we also need to understand that it's the spirit of God. It's also angels. It's also the human spirit. Do you know you can pick up prophetically when someone's in the human spirit? Did you know that? Would you like to know how that works? So I've got this guy that's come and he pulls me out and he begins to tell me what I want to hear. And I knew it was from his spirit. You say, well, hang on, how can you know it's from his spirit discernment? Do you know why it's important for you to discern? Because you won't be confused with the words given to you. You'll be able to discern them and say, that's not of God, this is of God, that's okay, you missed it, let's get on with the show. It's always best that you understand how to discern words because if you take a person as 100% reliable in the prophetic and they can't make mistakes, you will take a word and mistranslate it and misinterpret it and you can end up in a lot of danger. Here's another example. I was in a meeting and here's this prophetess. She's out the front prophesying. She's Mrs. Prophetess of the church. And she was up there and she was prophesying over everyone. Next minute she comes up to me and she starts prophesying. You need a father and you need a spiritual this and you need that. In an encouraging way. It was almost like all my dreams came true at once. God, you've heard me. But my spirit didn't receive it. Because whatever she was coming out of was not the right spirit. Oh, can't you still receive that? No, I can't. Because whatever that was, that wasn't the Spirit of God. No, it wasn't a condemning word. It was actually something that the Spirit of God wasn't speaking to me. It was a familiar spirit. How do you know it's a familiar spirit? Because there was no spirit on it. Therefore, she knows something about me that only God would know, and this thing's been read in a play and understanding this is a real core issue for me. So a familiar spirit got involved, and my spirit actually grieved when she gave me that word. It wasn't from the Spirit of God. Isn't that interesting? Usually when something's accurate, the person, they'll well up on the inside. They'll feel a sense of release. They'll feel a joy, or they'll feel a crying and a release of the burden. They'll feel the release. I, most, most people that I get specific words for, they always cry. Why? Because it hits them right in the, boom, hits them in the spot. It's like that. I so needed to hear that. Boom, they release the burden. They release the grief. Or they usually laugh afterwards. So it releases and then they laugh. Okay? So would you say that that is so like the um, soulish prophecy is witchcraft because it is as of flesh so there, you know you talk about purity and just hanging out with God being filled with the spirit of God and then the spirit of God moves through you whereas often I've seen what I think is that um it's a fleshly thing. So the danger is if, if, if we're not really, you know what I mean, sold out for Jesus and really sort of being obedient, right? Um, I've seen people who've been very prophetic and then all of a sudden things go awry and it was simply because distractions, all that sort of thing, and then... They're just not being filled up with the Spirit. Sin enters their life. The Spirit's just being washed out. You know what I mean? It's like the plugs are out. Yeah. And uh, you can get prophetic pride. Yeah. I see a lot of prophetic pride 
there's people that have had yeah. experience in the prophetic yeah. and they end up prideful as though I'm, I've been there, done that and who can, you can't tell me and they, they get very uh, against other prophetic people as though they don't know what they're talking about. Um, but in your particular case, what you're talking about, I would call it self-will, which is, will. that's witchcraft in a sense, it's rebellion, self-will, right? Yeah. But you've got to look at it like this, what would be the opposite of self-will? As the spirit, yeah, that, yeah. as the spirit yeah. wills, yeah. see, self-will, yeah. but the gift manifests according to as the spirit wills. See the difference? Yeah. 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 One is head, one is spirit. There's a big difference. That's why you've got to be careful with the prophetic. Don't get too up here. Don't process too much. It's very dangerous. You've always got to be in sync with the spirit. That's why my soul is in my spirit right now. Why? Because you can get caught up in this and it over processes and under manifests the spirit. So you always got to be in sync. So if you see me slow down when I speak, I go real slow. It's not because I'm a slow speaker. It's because I want to be in sync. I've got to slow down for my spirit. Because I'm more interested in what God's wanting to do, not more interested in what I want to say. I hope that makes sense. So self-will versus the spirit's willingness to move. Yep. You want to say, ask a question? Yeah. I think what I've seen over the years is a lot of front row prophecy. Front row. Yeah, that one's going to get past the front row. Which yeah. Which is strange that God only speaks to the front row. And, <laughs> and I think a lot of it is actually, a lot of the time is a word of encouragement. Yeah. Not actually the prophetic. And yeah. I think it gets mixed a lot of time. It, mm. And I think there's nothing wrong with giving someone a word of encouragement. Yeah. But that's, it should be called, I've got an encouraging word for you, mm -hmm. rather than... I suppose communicated as though it's from God and it's. Mm. I think they're very. I think they get. I think the waters get muddied a little bit, and suddenly a word that's getting spoken over someone is taken as prophetic. Yeah. When it's probably more a word of encouragement, and that's the, that's what I've seen a lot of. And, yeah. Um, and, and, and and the prophetic is so non-specific. Yeah, because that's really safe. Wrong. Yeah, that's safe. You know what I mean? So it's sort of more of a word of encouragement. Yep. And, and I think that's the basic level of the prophetic, yeah. is the word of encouragement. Yeah. But this is why I've got a problem with people that prophesy in public settings, because if it doesn't minister to the spirit, yeah. so you're a spirit, bro. Yeah. You're a spirit, you're a spirit, you're a spirit, right? If it doesn't minister to their spirit, it's not true prophetic. It's a lot of abstract language, right? It's out there and it's, I see this and I see that, but where's the witness? See, it's easy for me to say, I sense this and I see that. But when it comes to personal prophetic, I can be put on the spot and just go there, boom. So, right, Lord, I'm going to prophesy in faith because the gift that's on me. See the difference? Where some people, if they stay, if they, if they just do the abstract, they're safe because who's going to question it sounds good, it sounds spiritual, it sounds great. And, oh, wow, God's got angels here. I mean, it's all fluffy. But when you're starting to look at people and say, right, Holy Spirit, by faith I'm going to start prophesying, you know that you're relying on the gift and you prophesy according to your faith. See, most of the times I prophesy according to my faith. That's why I said to you, some people have come up to me and say, Mark, give me a word. And I said, I'm not giving you a word. Because I'm not a poker machine. I'm not a lucky draw. But I said, if the Lord gives me something, I'll give it to you. But if he doesn't, I don't care who you are. I'm not going to produce something from me if it's not manifesting from the Lord. Yeah. So who... Yep. Um, Derek Prince, we've discussed this before. Derek Prince said, when you... Prophesy over someone, yeah. have a word for them. You say what you have. Don't extrapolate. Don't yeah. add to it. Very don't good. Feel like you have to explain yourself. Yeah, it's literally if it's a sentence, five yeah. words. That's all you do. Don't try and add to it. Very good. It's just exactly. Yeah. What you Keep do it simple. Ask. And and sometimes some things are extended, but that's in rare cases. 
right? It could be a prophetic word about your destiny. It could be concerning the future and how God's working that process. You can ask them. What's well, the word of knowledge? knowledge? Yeah, word of knowledge is having supernatural facts about something. And if it's if it's a warning, that is word of knowledge. Uh, if it's a warning, yeah. It, it, it's it's more okay when you say you get a warning, but you don't know what's going to happen. No, like I knew it's going to happen and it happened. Okay, well that's a word of knowledge. Which word of knowledge is a really cool because they give you supernatural facts in a knowing. See the inner knowing. See, someone can talk to me up here and something in here is not registering. That's why we've got to be trained in spirit, not soul. Every conversation I'm in, I'm always sensitive to the spirit. So this actually happened like my brother just passed away Mm. like three weeks ago. Yep. So I was was in Papua New Guinea and I was sitting with my sister-in-law and I knew she was about to say something that wasn't true. And I said, I just turned to her, I said, don't say it. And she said, you don't even know what I'm going to say. I said, I have a feeling you're going to say something about a family member. And she said, yeah. So she did say it. And I said, okay, pray about it and let it go. But then she went and told her kids and my nephew and my niece. And then they tried to do a big thing about it. And I said, you need to go and apologize or something's going to happen. Anyway, she died last Monday. She just fell. Yeah. Yeah, and it's and there's dangerous too. There's danger in that side of things. That's why we've got to be very careful because sometimes the prophetic is actually not accurate because we're coming out of our own space. I'm not saying that with you. There could have been a genuine, legit warning of God prompting you. So the warning of the Spirit is to train you. Can I just get an amen on that? Amen. So if you ever get warnings and you get grind like grief and pain and you're always feeling like you're going through it, that's prophetic training. If you want to know what that is, it's, it's training for reigning. Now, who here would like to have a go at prophesying? And you're in a safe place. Lord, I thank you for the anointing here. I thank you that you're the prophet. I thank you that um, your presence is here. And I thank you that you want to speak to people. There's no point talking about this unless people are stepping into it. Thank you for that anointing. Lord, I'm sensing it right now. Thank you, Jesus. If you want to step into the prophetic, you're going to have to take risks. You can actually come under prophetic anointing and start prophesying. Remember King Saul? He came amongst the prophets and he started prophesying. And he was a flippin' carnal king. Remember he started prophesying under the prophetic anointing? Right. So there's an anointing here, and it means you're safe, you're in a good place, and it means that you can pray, because how are you going to learn how to do it if you don't step up? Are you just going to sit there all these years and see the guy down the front and he's prophesying, guest ministry, blah, 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 and you're desiring, and you sense things, and you're dreaming, and you're seeing things that God's showing you, how are you ever going to activate it? Come on. Oh, come on. Someone new. Someone take take a bold step. Come up the front. Because why am I doing it like this? Last time we've done it in a circle. But I'm going to get you to come up the front and I want you to look at people and ask the Lord. Because when you're up the front and you're ministering, you're looking at a whole plethora of <laughs> different reactions and you're looking at different attitudes and you're looking at people's heart stuff and and that's why public ministry is not always easy. 
But I couldn't think of anything better if you want to step into the prophetic. I couldn't think of anything better being under pressure and learning how to listen to God. What, he wanted it all nice, cute and fluffy all the time? I'd jump all over it. So I'm waiting. I'm in no rush. And if you've got a real desire there, you don't have to be on the camera. I just want you to come up and I want you to pray and ask the Holy Spirit. No, don't stop it. No. Branda Ripe, Bati Latuka Kalati Kalaba. Thank you, Lord. The prophetic is brewing. Whoo, Shakala Baba, the anointing's falling. Branda Kila Baba, times of refreshing for you, Mel. Bam, right now, in Jesus' name. Bashike Deka Deka Taka Dika Taka. Branda Shete. Just close your eyes, Mel. Father, I thank you. And then just put your hand, arms up. Just say, Lord Jesus. I receive a fresh touch of your presence, of your anointing, right now. Holy Spirit, thank you for falling upon Mel. Thank you for the touch of heaven in the precious name of Jesus, that the glory of your presence is manifesting upon her life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for every physical part of her life under the hand of the Lord. The power of God comes upon her physically. Thank you that her flesh is touched with the power of your spirit. Touched with the almighty hand of God upon her. Fire coming down upon her body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you're reviving her flesh. You're reviving her body. Thank you, Lord. All the tension is leaving in the mighty name of Jesus. Since so that fire coming down, guys, in Jesus' name. Fire upon you, Mel. Fire of God upon you, Mel. Power of God upon you. Healing you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Healing virtue going through your body. In Jesus' name. Getting heavy. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Whoo! Fire! In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Think of that fire, that healing virtue going through her life in Jesus' name. Yep. Branda ripa tashta kipa katashta kata baratashta kapa baratashta. Brata shata kata. Times of refreshing coming from the presence of the Lord upon your life, Mel. Brando rupa pa ripe pa ripe pa ripe pa pa rapa pa pa basa ta rapa pa ripe pe deste. Whew, man, getting heavy in here, man. You feel that, Mel? Hallelujah. Put your hand over your head. Just say thank you, Jesus, for anointing my head with oil. My mind is receiving the oil. And my spirit is overflowing. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Ooh, ya la baba. Thank you, Jesus. So who's coming? Maybe I should have taught about something else. No, just come up. Yeah, come. Then, you know, if you have to pray in the spirit a bit, that's fine. I just, what I want you to do is first stand next to me, please. And I want you to feel, just close your eyes. I want you to feel, I want you to get into the anointing. Why? Because I want to get her out of her soul. I want her to get a touch of this anointing. Why is that important? Because I'm the one ministering, aren't I? Correct? Therefore, she's come under, under what's on my life. Can you feel that, Maggie? Mm. That's a bit of fire. Mm. Sorry, I was That's right. So, so it, it's not on anyone, but I just... When we no, I want it to be for a person here. Oh, okay. 
Okay, I just you can share that, but it's for a person. This is why we're doing prophetic. Right in the middle here. No, no. While you're here, I want you to pray and ask. No, let's ask the Holy Spirit. Okay. Because the Holy Spirit likes people. Did you know that? Okay. Did you know that? Yep. Do you know he really likes me, John? Mm -hmm. You can't ask him. He likes me. Does he like you, John? He loves you, mate. Well, I feel it's right in the middle here. These two guys. I yeah, so know. pray in the tongues, yeah. and, and I want you to ask the Holy Spirit. Because I want you to have something specific as a form of encouragement for him. And if you're not getting nothing, that's fine. You can go and pray, and then we'll get someone else up. Because I'm not here. We don't have to manufacture anything. We've got to look for the willingness of the Spirit. All right? There's no pressure. I just see a mango tree. Besides that, it's just here. So it's not when I close my eyes and pray. It's more on this guy with the blue shirt. I just saw this massive mango tree and all these mangoes hanging, like lots of mangoes on it, fruit. And what do you feel that means? Is it him as a tree? Because we know in the scriptures that people are seen as trees, or is it business or is I it fruitfulness it's growth. yeah it's growth yeah. in something whatever you are doing this growth it's going notice to... the word did you notice what come out of the maggie's spirit come on listen to the words it's something you're doing notice that come out of a spirit man go so I just feel gro growth, growing, whatever you are doing is going to grow. Besides, Hallelujah. Lots of mangoes, just that whole tree, massive tree, mangoes heading everywhere. Lots of wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> what's your response to that? Uh, and by the way, that's lifting off too. Whatever that is on your chest, it's lifting off in the mighty. Put your hand on your chest. That pressure on your chest, I break its power in Jesus' name. That burden lifts off tonight. God says that anxiousness, it goes. It's out. Just receive the peace. Close your eyes and say, it's not my burden, Lord. I give it to you. You're the one that brings increase. There it is, take it. In the mighty name of Jesus, I break that burden off your chest in Jesus' name. I command it to leave. In the mighty name of Jesus. God's changing your expectation as well. Not expectation to fail and expectation of things to go wrong. God's breaking that expectation off you. Expectation of better days is coming upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. We, we declare a fresh expectation. Fresh perspective. The Lord says you have not laboured in vain. There it is. You have not laboured in vain. Be encouraged. You're not labouring in vain. In the mighty name of Jesus. And fresh fire upon you. Even your prayer life says the Lord. I'm about to boost it in fire. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Merry heart does like medicine, doesn't it? So take your medicine. Times of refreshing coming upon you. All that weight's gone, right? Bam, broken in Jesus' name. Yeah, it's broken. It's smashed in the spirit realm. Torn off you in Jesus' name. Whew, man. What's that feel like, bro? Fire, eh? <laughs> yeah. And I've um, just battled through it and battled through it for yeah. years, you know. Yeah. Yeah. In the past um, month and month and a half, of just like yeah, I'm, I'm playing with the biggest companies on the planet. And it's just like the light mind blowing. I get this, this, what's about to happen, and I feel it as well. Um, 
and I've only felt this over the last sort of week because um, a lot of things have changed like daily. It's just absolutely mind blowing the amount of financial wealth and the growth of the business. Um, Amen. It's like, if I say it, people wouldn't, you would never believe it. You know? no. it's, but it's, it's huge. It's like, it could turn into a million dollars a month, you know, mm. millions. And it's, it's phenomenal, you know. Okay. Well, let's contend for you. So how about you put your hands up? Just say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. This is the word in season. This is the word of Jesus. There's a fruitful. There's a fruitful. Fruit bearing. There's a fruit bearing. Process happening. Process happening. There's a work happening. Sorry? There's a work happening. There's the work happening. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive For carrying me. what's not mine. For carrying what's not mine. You begin the good work. You're going to bring it to completion. You're going to bring it to completion. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I come into agreement. I come into agreement that you're going to do exceedingly, you're going to do exceedingly abundantly, abundantly, above all that I ask, above all that I ask think, think, or imagine, or imagine according to the power that works in me. That works in me. So, Father, let's just pray for him quickly. Marvin, isn't it? Yeah, Father, we just lift up Marvin to you and we contend. We thank you for the word that came from Maggie. We thank you, Father God, that this is going to be a season of fruitfulness in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for covering his head in the day of battle. We thank you for anointing his head with oil that his spirit would overflow. We thank you that every thought, wild method, scheme, dark imagination, everything that exalts itself against the true wisdom and knowledge of the word of God to be absolutely smashed and annihilated and taken captive in his life. We thank you, Father God, that everything behind him is nothing compared to what is before him and the darkness that has come against him is nothing compared to the light that's going to be revealed in him. And I want to say thank you, Father, for blessing the work of his hands. And I thank you for Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, that the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and it adds no sorrow. And I thank you, Lord, that you delight in the prosperity of your servant. I thank you for Psalms 34, verse 10, young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. And Matthew 6, 33, as you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness... All these things will be added unto you. Thank you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that fire comes upon Marvin. Break him into a new dimension. Break him into the power of God. Take him where he's never been before. Take him there, Jesus. Let the power of God do the job on his behalf. And we thank you that the angels are assisting that word and manifesting that word in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Interesting thing with that vision. Branda ribba da ribba ribba ribba. The biggest tree, the the most fruitful. I think what Mark broke off you there was that pressure. When you heard that vision, did that pressure to perform was taken off you? It's yep. like you're now rooted and grounded in something different. Yep. But that, that tree is a big tree, man. Amen. Amen. This thing is so huge. It's like there's no other person on the planet or the universe spiritually could open up a door like this for a person that is like I'm a one million man at the moment, but I have I I supply to mining companies. I have the largest mm. electrical uh, wholesaler in Australia and probably close to the world um, and I'm just about and I, I feel very very confident of closing a deal now with uh, mm. Energy Queensland mm. for a five year contract All right. well let's come into agreement Father we thank you that you didn't bring him this far for him to sink you didn't bring him this far to chuck him in the water and not teach him how to swim so, Father, we ask for the wisdom of God in his life at this time. It's not a matter of trying harder, it's a matter of wisdom. We pray for the spirit of wisdom to come upon Marvin in the name of Jesus. We pray the how-tos, the upskilling, the know-hows in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Yes. Right. Branda Ribbipichipabla Amen. Government agencies right. come to my company. Right. 
Yeah. We'll talk later. Yeah. All right. But the main, we get the main gist. All right. So we want to continue. No, we want to continue. Let's just yeah, stay. Well done, Maggie. Yeah. Done. Well done, Maggie. See that? Yes. And look, she's still okay. <laughs> she's still in one piece. How do you feel now? How do you feel now? Huh? How do you feel? You feeling good now? What's going on? <laughs> Nothing. How's that feeling now? It's feeling good? That's the Holy Ghost boost, isn't it? Uh, hallelujah. All right, so anyone else? Come on. We, we've got to finish up. Anyone else? Who's excited about this? Yeah? You want to come up, Scott? Okay. Would you like to come up, the lady in the back? Yeah, I've got a feeling you want to come up. And your name, sorry? Lisa. Awesome. So, everyone welcome Lisa. Good on you, Lisa. All right, guys. So, you can come on the right side. There's something about the right side. <laughs> it is, I'm telling you. Something. I'm, yeah, yeah, it's funny, I'm left-handed, but I don't like people standing on my left side. I kick with my right foot and punch with my right hand. All right, so just close your eyes, Lisa. Hey, guys, we just want to continue here. So, Father God, we just thank you for the anointing upon Lisa. We thank you for the anointing. Lord, we know that we want Lisa in the covering of, of, of the anointing of God. Just pray in tongues for a bit, Lisa. Just go there in your spirit. Just get close to the Holy Spirit. What's it feel like here? Hmm? Yeah. I just want you to relax. We want to get people to relax. We want them to be in the peace of God. It's very important. Okay? I want her to feel the weight. I want to feel the spirit. It's very important. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming heavy. <laughs> Holy Spirit. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> it's strong up here, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's strong. See, this is where we want to walk in dimension, don't we? Yeah? It's not about your physical weight, it's about the spiritual weight. And it's also about the weight, isn't it? It's waiting on the Lord, isn't it? <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you reckon, Lisa? So I want you to pray in the spirit a bit and just stay, stay, stay in that safe place. And if there's someone that's highlighted to you, and you feel something in your spirit. Brando Robo Bodoso, Bishi Kepa, Kiketeka Papa, Bikalama, Siketeka La Baba. Hallelujah. When you're ready, Lisa. Funny, I had a fruit tree as well. Yeah, who's got the fruit tree this time? This is man down the back in the black shirt. Oh, the man down the black. Yeah. Um, down the black. <laughs> <laughs> man down the black. Um, yeah, I, that's I, Niall. Give her the microphone. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, I saw an orange tree. Um, and I felt that that was reflective of a real zest for life. And, um, and also, orange, I know, often is used in conjunction with perseverance on the positive side. And I just yeah, orange, that's that, right. Uh, you know, God was really saying that you have a real spirit of perseverance. Come on. And, um, yeah. Wow. Well, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, persevering spirit. He's an orange tree. You have orange trees too, don't you? I do. And do you like oranges? Well, that's wonderful. Do you want another go? Here, we might as well have more goes. There's no point in giving up on that one. Ask the Holy Spirit for more. Same person? No, just anyone. Might as well stay in the flow. Thank 
Thank you, Jesus. Um, I'm not sure what your name is. Natasha. Natasha. Yeah, I just really felt like God was saying, you're the apple of his eye. Aww. And um, yeah, I don't know what it is about fruit tonight. We've had mangoes <laughs> and oranges and apples. Apple of your eye. Yeah, yeah. Really, you really are the apple of his eye. And I just felt for you, Marvin, when... Um, you spoke about the mango tree. What really stood out was that it's not even in season at the moment. And I feel like God was saying, you're bearing fruit when people would actually expect that wouldn't be the case right now. You're bearing it out of season in that sense. So, That's good. Yeah. That's been happening over the last, every day, it's just getting, the things are just getting bigger and bigger, yeah. more confirmation. Hallelujah. Mm. There's also been a little bit of things that I was a bit worried and stuff, which I, I've just released it. And you feeling better now? Yeah. You feeling better now? Yeah, I feel awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, Natasha, you're the you're the apple. Oh, oh, you, oh, she loves apples. Lisa, isn't it? I'm going for a season actually. Where I'm addicted to apples. I've been eating them every day. Okay. <laughs> have, have we got one more taker? Yeah. <laughs> have we got one more person? Who thinks this is fun? Yeah. Scary. Oh, just two people. Alan's. <laughs> Alan, you're my greatest supporter, honestly. You're such an encourager. Come on. Who has a desire to operate in the prophetic? Come on, Chrissy. They are me. There's only one Chrissy here. She's looking behind. Oh, me? Oh. <laughs> I do, but I, I, I struggle with too much busyness in my own head. Yeah. So I don't feel like I would be able to start. Okay. Well, why don't you just try and sit in the spirit for a bit and then see what you sense? How about it's not about you? It's about, God, what have you got for someone else? Because sometimes it's actually the hardest to hear from God for yourself than what it is for others. And that's what I love about the gift. It's about others. You know, you'll hear from God more for others than what you will. Prophetic people struggle in their own life more than what they struggle for others. Because the gift is meant to encourage others. Come on, come on, Chrissy. Come on. And then we'll pray and we're done for the night. You have to stand on my right side, though. No, so just close your eyes first. I just want you to... Just the anointing. Just bond with the Holy Spirit first. And you notice how the Holy Spirit, right? He's, he's not lifting. Like I still feel Him here now, strong, right? And this is what I love, because I think people fear in a service... They don't know how to just sit with the Spirit. I could sit here for an hour. The only distraction is your face. Because I could be okay with sitting in His presence. So get used to sitting in His presence. The fact that He's just here with me is the most comforting thing I could ever experience. That His manifested presence is like, I'm here, Mark. I'm like, sweet. You feel that? Oh, my heart just now. Hmm? Yeah. Well, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Just relax. Don't think, just drink. <laughs> and you know what? As I close my eyes and you receive from the Spirit, you watch the Spirit will keep pouring out. You know, the Spirit knows your willingness to receive. Do you know why the Spirit's not pouring out in most meetings? Because they're not willing to receive. They're interested more in running something instead of let him, letting Him manifest. You watch this. Close your eyes and just breathe. And you'll sense His presence. Wow. Finish that now, Natasha. Oh man, it's